Hello, my name is Dan Klimek with Siskin Company, and our safety meeting for today is going to be on common electrical hazards in the workplace. One of the first concepts we need to talk about is this idea of a qualified versus non-qualified electrical workers. Most of you are going to be a non-qualified electrical worker. A qualified electrical worker is a, reper is a person who has received training and has demonstrated the skills and knowledge in the construction, operation, and identifying the hazardous components of electrical equipment. So most of you are going to be people that work around electricity, use electricity in your job, but you are not a qualified electrical worker. Keep that in mind as you are moving ahead and doing day-to-day -day activities, that there are certain things that are maybe beyond what you should be doing uh, when it comes to electrical work. One of the things we want to talk about is the concept of electric shock. And this really happens when electrical current passes through the body, and depending on where the current enters and where it exits will determine to a large extent how severe that injury is going to be. If something goes in a hand and comes out, let's say, you know, part of a different finger, you may feel it as a tingle or whatever. But if that same current goes in through the hand, goes through the chest, goes out the other arm, it may interfere with the heart, the lungs, and you may actually basically die from that because your heart is not going to be beating right. So the path of the current through the body is a, is a huge issue. The amount of current flowing through the body is a huge issue. A large amount of current may actually turn some of the inner body tissues to a carbon as opposed to just being slightly stimulating of nerve impulses and, and overriding uh, you know, the nerve impulse to the heart and to the lungs. And the length of time that the body is in contact with with an electrical uh, short or an electrical contact can make a huge difference with the degree or the, uh, of Ill injury uh, and, or even the likelihood of death. Because what happens is that when we contact electrical, we may not be able to let go. So even though you're thinking, I need to open my hand, you can't open your hand to let go of it. So, and just because we're talking about things that are lower voltage, doesn't necessarily mean it's lower hazard. 110 volts is the most likely killer of most people from electrical accidents in the United States. When we deal with another concern is electrical burns. This has to do more with maybe higher voltages and these are the type of things where the electrical contact actually burns the body and causes and, and can cause very serious internal injuries that may not be apparent at the time that the contact was made. Another thing we never think about often is that if we're working from a ladder or, or we're working from elevation and we contact electricity or get an electric shock, because of how the body responds and we lose control of things, we may actually fall. So what might be the most serious thing is the fall we have, not the electrical contact we've had. So there's a number of reasons we need to be concerned with electrical contact and electrical shocks. So. As we're putting together the things we're doing for the job, as we're looking at stuff, as we're looking at equipment, we want to make sure it's all in good shape. One of the things that we need to consider is the use of portable electric generators. When you guys are on location or out in the field, you may be using generators. And it's possible to have an electric shock and electric, an electrocution from these generators if you haven't got them hooked up correctly or you haven't got them grounded correctly. Another issue you have with a generator is the fact that these little gas engines tend to put out a lot of carbon monoxide. You can also have the situation where the thing is hot and you're going to dump or you're going to basically refuel it without letting the engine cool down some. You spill gasoline, you have a fire hazard. And also, depending on how close you work to this generator, you have the issue of noise and other vibration issues that, again, can be health hazards for you. Okay, another thing we need to consider is, is extension cords. When we're using an extension cord, the ground prong needs to be in place. If it's not, discard the cord or at least take it out of service until, until that cord can be repaired. And you always want to inspect the cord for damage anytime you use it. If there are things where the insulation is nicked or cut, or you have areas where the cord has been taped, those are not allowed in industry. So they're unsafe, take them out of service. When we're looking at, at any kind of an extension cord, you need to inspect it, you need to make sure the jackets are, are intact, 
and that there is no possibility of internal damage. If you see something on the cord that makes you a little bit suspicious about what's been, what has happened, maybe it's been driven over, those type of things, the cord needs to be pulled out of service and inspected. Another issue we have are things called ground fault circuit interrupters. These devices are really put in electrical circuits for your protection. What they do is they sense the electrical going out on a line, they sense the electric coming back on the line, and if there's a difference, they actually open it up to protect you from shock. If you're using an extension cord, you need to have a GFCI someplace in the system, either at the building or use a portable GFCI close to the tool. Lockout tagout is a very important part of electrical safety. Anytime somebody is working on something where there is an electrical exposure, the equipment needs to be shut off, it needs to be locked out, it needs to be tagged out. Overhead power lines are another concern. You don't have to actually touch a power line to have this be a problem because you can get close enough to it where it can arc. So always stay away from power lines and if you're using piping or backhoes or cranes, make sure that you stay away and that you keep adequate distance. Handheld power tools are another concern. What we have here is you're holding the electrical tool right in your hand. If there's an electrical short or some kind of a fault, it's right there in front of you. So you want to make sure that your tools are insulated or they are double insulated. If you're using a, a, a grounded tool, that you have a good grounding system and that the, uh, the grounding uh, is, is correct from the tool back to the building wiring. So in review, we have qualified, non-qualified workers. For most electrical issues, you would be considered a non-qualified electrical worker. Make sure you don't do work that you shouldn't be doing. Portable generators. You want to make sure that they're grounded correctly and that you're using them in open air so you're not going to have carbon monoxide issues. Overhead power lines. You want to stay away from overhead power lines. You want to make sure that your extension cords are inspected and that you're using GFCIs anytime that you're using an extension cord. Following these few, these few tips can make the difference between having an electrical accident and having electricity be one of those things that we use and see it as a pretty important tool to get the job done. This presentation is available at www.gomsea.org.